Hey, we're Flick and Joe, and this is our dog, Walter. In 2022, we made the crazy decision to quit our full-time jobs, pack up our lives, and move aboard our blue water sailing boat. We spent many months refitting her and getting her ready for our plans until one day we actually did it. We cast off the lines, we pointed her south, and off we went. We've now sailed over a thousand nautical miles, dodging orcas, yes, actually, and most of the rocks along the way. Join us for the beautiful, quite stressful, but endlessly eventful life that is full-time living aboard. In this week's episode, we take you on a tour of our tiny floating home. Beautiful pieces of artwork. It's quite a contentious subject. Delicious! <laughs> Hello! <laughs> Hi! Welcome to this <laughs> boat tour video! So, we are in a marina in Morocco, in Tangier, and we thought that now would be a good time to do a little boat tour, which we've been promising for a while, but now we actually have a bit of free time to actually pull it together. So, welcome to Nondes! and uh, let's show you around. Uh, so she's a 40-foot uh, Gypsy 402, uh, built in 1989. She is a 12.4 meter fiberglass masthead sloop, 9.9 .9 meters at the waterline with a 3.8 meter beam. Nondes has a draft of two meters with a cast iron fin keel and a spade rudder to match. Gypsy as a brand was established in France in 1972. The sailing boats are renowned for being well-designed, sturdy and well-finished in the interiors. Famous French naval architect Michel Joubert and Bernard Nivet worked on the various boat designs. The high popularity of Gypsy sailboats provided comfort and speed. They were considered sport cruising yachts. And in 1996, the brand were bought out by another French shipyard, Defer. From there, the Gypsy brand eventually fizzled out as Defer stopped manufacturing the boats. This is an older style fiberglass boat, so it's got a big 3.8 meter beam, but then it goes narrower again at the back. So the back of the boat, the stern, or the transom is only two and a half meters wide. So it sort of swells out at the sides and then it's got a little tiny bump. Whereas all the modern production boats nowadays, they come wide at the middle and then they stay big all the way to the back, they got big butts. We'll start at the bow and then we'll work our way back towards the cockpit. We have a beast of a 25 kilo Rockner anchor. It's oversized for the boat and that was a deliberate decision because we want to spend lots of time at anchor and we really don't want to drag. And then in here we have 75 meters of 10 mil chain and we have a 1000 watt windlass. This is our mast, it has a couple of winches on the side which we actually very rarely use because all of the lines run back to the cockpit so everything we need to do whilst we're sailing you can do from the cockpit and you don't have to come up on deck. So most of the time we end up hauling the sail up from here just because it's easier and quicker. Taking our way back to the cockpit now this is the, we have a traveller on um, the main sheet forward of the bimini here, the spray hood, which is really good because it keeps the main sheet out of the cockpit. So whilst you're sailing, you don't have a main sheet in the cockpit that you could potentially get tangled on, or if you jive, it will slam across the other side. And similarly, the boom ends here, just at the very beginning of the cockpit, um, which is great because it's very low risk if you ever whacking your head. And neither of us are very tall. Yeah, we're both quite short, so not a, not a risk. This is our cockpit area. At the moment, we don't have any. We would have Genoa sheets here for the head sail um, that go through these pulleys. And then they would come to these big winches and we control the head sail with the winch on either side. And then moving back, we've got our pedestal with our wheel. So the pedestal has got some of our Garmin gadgets in there, which is, uh, it tells us our wind angle, wind speed, and it tells us your speed over ground, and you can cycle through other things, and it tells you your depth. And this is like a backup chart plotter, which we don't actually really use anymore, um, mainly because it doesn't have uh, charts in there, it doesn't have an SD card with charts in it. And then down here, 
this is our little autopilot control unit which is really good because it's touch screen and you can set it to steer by apparent wind, true wind, angle or you can set it to just follow a, a compass heading or you can set it to follow a, a course on the chart platter which is really cool. So this big ginormous bit of stainless steel off the back of the boat is our stainless steel stern arch we had built in Plymouth obviously hosts our solar panels so we've got three solar panels up there and we've got one on the side of the boat it's currently facing down but it's because we're plugged into shore power so we don't need it but this stern arch also acts as davits for the dinghy which is really cool you just lower it down like that it actually lowers down the whole frame what's cool about this is it clears the back of the boat so the dinghy doesn't rub or push and pull off on the back of the boat to pull it up is a bit more hard work a bit welly into it because we don't have a very good set of pulleys. The outboard little six horsepower Mercury gets mounted here on the push pit and we have this block system that I set up which is very much overkill but it makes it very easy. Can just hook that onto our little blue little harness and you can hoist the dinghy hoist the outboard up really easily and yeah it makes it pretty safe so we've got some lockers here on the side one on the other side as well a little bit mildewy at the moment but we've got you know we've got a spare we've got a generator in there 2200 watt generator we've got some petrol jerry cans diesel jerry cans we've got a cockpit table which comes out, and I'll show you that in a second. Quite clever actually, but it's by a company called Lagoon. And there's, there's a bracket here, so this like table leg slides onto the bracket like that. So that's the leg on, and then you just put the tabletop on. And all it does is it just there's a hole here, and it slides onto this little spike. So that tightens up move it out the way like that and there you go here's your cockpit table and our cockpit table can be this way so around. you can move it articulate it whichever way you want final bit of the cockpit lockers we've got another one here um, yeah. and again we've got a mirror image on the other side of the boat but in here is our uh, steering pedestal our quadrant uh, we've got a bunch of pipes for bilge pipes and uh, exhaust pipes and stuff like that and normally our autopilot would be installed here but currently it is here and it has been taken apart because uh, I'm fixing it over winter I'm just waiting for some replacement parts but we got some spare backup chain in here and other bits of spare some oil and yeah bits and bobs so on the other side here we've got another cockpit locker and another cockpit locker there and that basically concludes the cockpit We've got this spray head which we had made in Plymouth, um, which is great. It keeps the wind and the rain off you um, in bad weather. And all of our lines run back to this cockpit. So we can control our reef lines, the main sheet, the boom vang, the halyard. Yeah, everything comes back to here. So it's really, really nice. And we've got a couple of smaller winches to help control these lines when we need it. So I think, with that being said, we go downstairs. So bright. Yeah. Uh, so now we'll have a look down the lake. Welcome to Inside Nondas. So this is the galley where we do all our cooking and food prep and things like that. So we've got a double top loading fridge. This side is like a proper fridge. This side is more like a cooling fridge or a cool box or something like it keeps it cold but it's not got a fan in or a cooling element it just sort of uses the coldness from that side across to it um all of our like regular use cooking bits go behind here and then i'm not going to open them because they're well i'll open this one they're quite messy but that's where all of our like, cooking bits and bobs go so glasses are all in here pans and stuff like that are all in there and then plates nutribullet all of those things go in here and then, clever stuff, we've got a dual hob induction worktop, um, which is amazing. We use that to boil water and for everything else, basically. We don't have a kettle or anything, but we found that that was quick enough. 
And then down here we've got our Ninja Air Fryer, which is amazing. Um, does the best roast potatoes you'll like ever have. And yeah, very simple to work. You can kind of cook anything basically in there. You've just got a slightly more constrained space to cook with. But other than that, it feels like you're cooking at home. It's really good. And then when we're at sea, we just use this little bungee to hook it on to make sure that those drawers don't go flying everywhere. So when we bought the boat, this was all dark wood, uh, all of this, which we'll include some photos of. And we had a gas hob and oven there instead of this. It was gimbaled, so we used the old gimbal fittings on the side and then Joe built this, which you might have seen in a previous video, which is like a little wooden gimbal for us, which holds all of our cooking stuff in. But yeah, it was all quite dark colours and now we've just brightened it all up by painting it white. Moving uh, starboard of the galley, we've got our nav station. So we've got a whole video on the nav station if you want to find out a bit more about how Joe built it or the electronics behind it. But in summary, these are our switches for controlling basically the whole boat. We've got our alarms for the bilge, for the engine bilge and for the uh, normal bilge. Um, radio, chart plotter, and then this is our little computer that tells us information about the boat. And then in this one, we've got loads of uh, books and charts and things all live in there behind a little leather panel, which we can pull back. And the same behind here is like all our wires and messy stuff. And then, we have our nav table, which underneath all of this is important documents and passports and all of that stuff. It's quite an annoying design. This lifts up, which means you can't have anything on it when you're trying to lift it up, but we work with it, it's fine. The screen, which moves around so we can sit over there and we can watch TV or we can be working from here and the screen moves around exactly how we want it. So I can sit here and work whenever, which is really good and it looks away. Under here, we have Joe's inverter, charger, and Vitron, and fuses, and basically everything that's important technically in the boat lives in this cupboard. Uh, we've got more storage here, more little cupboards, that's like a cleaning cupboard. And then this one is a food cupboard full of snacks. And this one, is full of jars and tins. So moving towards the bow, on this side we've got all our batteries live under here. And at the very back behind these cushions is like another storage cupboard. We just use it for like coats, life jackets, stuff like that sure. when we're using it. I can't really move him and have a little peek. A little cubby hole behind bedding. here with lots of yeah bedding, life jackets, things like that. And on the opposite side of the boat, we have exactly the same. On this side as well, in here, we've got our water pump and loads of plumbing bits. Under this one is a 200 litre flexible water tank, like a water bladder thing. And then more storage goes in here, which is where Walter's dog food lives. And behind there, we've got like a little bookcase and some other storage and tools and things like that. And then here, our newest excitement, which we got for Christmas, is our freezer. This is our uh, saloon table and this leaf drops down and we have another leaf, this guy here, which drops in and then we can make that out into a double bed or we just use it as like a large sprawling area for while we're watching a movie. And then in the end bit, we've got a emergency pump. Yes, I think it's 11,000 litres a minute. It's a really big emergency pump. pump. Which is powered by 240. 230, 240. 230, 230 volts. Yeah which would be a problem if we got loads of water up to the electrics and it flooded all the electrics, but we've got a generator that has a plug on it, so we can just plug it into the generator and run it that way. Okay, so under here, we've got the bilge. Very exciting. Lots of cables and things go under there. We try to just keep it empty. We don't really use it for storage. We haven't needed to yet. Moving forward even further, this is the bow! We are now in the V-berth, which is like our guest cabin. We use it for that most of the time because the other one is taken up by the Walter and the Joe's stuff as well. Um, but it's a really nice little room. It's really wide here, sort of roughly a double, maybe a little bit wider than a normal double, I can't really tell, at the very, very front. But if you look behind me, behind the spare bedding and some cushions, it goes into a really small point. So 
people have loads of space here and then their feet are arguing for space at the bottom. And then we have our lovely little hatch here. So for anyone who is staying in the Viva, you can pop it open at night and watch the stars or first thing in the morning, you can hop straight out and into the sea, which is pretty nice. Heading into my pride and joy, our beautiful head. It's so cute in here. Lovely little bit of storage for toiletries and things. And then on the whole, just, it's just a nice, nice little bathroom. Feels a bit more homey and less boaty, which is quite nice. Moving back towards the nav table again, we're just going to show you these beautiful pieces of artwork. This is made by a Clementine Swift artist. <laughs> this is ma made by our friend Clammy Swift and her husband, Dan Aldous. And yeah, it's a very cool piece of art. And it's when we went traveling, we went to Guatemala and we saw Volcan Acatenango. And this is a print that you got done on a piece of wood, right? Yeah. What's the story behind that? Um, that was our first wedding, like Christmas. We've only had one wedding. So this is our other toilet room. Mainly we just use this as a shower if we're living like off grid. We don't really use that toilet because we use the one up in the Viva. So this is sort of our mainly our, a shower room. And we have, yeah, just like you would at home, you have a normal shower there. We get hot water, very hot water. It just doesn't last very long. So you have to have short showers. Also, we have short showers to conserve water as well because we have about 400 liters of water on the boat, but that does not last long if you have a long shower. So looking back at the back of the boat here, you've got two doors. In one room here, we've got a bedroom, which is where Walter sleeps. And I also store all my tools. And in the other room, that's where we sleep. I'll just show you Walter's room at first and be warned, it's very messy. It's where we just chuck all my tools and other storage bits and bobs. In, in here, we have Walter's bed, his boudoir. And I'm in here, I keep all my tools. And down the side here, I keep a whole variety of different types of tape, mainly. <laughs> For some reason, I seem to have accumulated many rolls of electrical tape and cellar tape and gaffer tape and parcel tape. And <laughs> it's quite a contentious subject. And that's our saving this bung. Is, this is the wooden bung that we use to it stop us, us sinking when we lost the prop shaft. So I love that bung. This is our favorite bung. <laughs> and here, this used to be um, sort of a bedside table here, and it's the same in the other bedroom, which we'll show you. But there used to be a sink here, and on, in the other bedroom there used to be a sink. And then we also have a sink in the galley, and then we have a sink in the V-berth toilet. So we had four sinks on a boat that's only 40 foot. So it didn't make any sense at all. So what we did is we took the sink out, we put a new plywood base in, and I built this set of shelves which has just given us some extra clothes storage. Do you want to seal up? And Flisty created this very simple, but very effective cover for it. So you can hide away the clutteredness look of all the clothes. But he always forgets to close it. So it always looks cluttered. Thank you, that's enough <laughs> of that. In here, we've got a little bit more storage. Got all my jumpers in there. And in here, we've got some more storage as well. Under the bed here, is where we've got the starter battery for the engine and we've also got a 120 litre water tank. Up above my head here is our EPIRB and EPIRB is a safety device. So what this does in the event of an emergency, we take it off and we activate it and it sends off a signal into space that's picked up by basically a satellite and with GPS it will tell because um, this is registered to the UK, it will tell Falmouth Coast Guard our location and then Falmouth Coast Guard will coordinate a rescue um, for wherever we are. It's only to be used in life-threatening scenarios. Moving across to the other side of the boat, this is our bedroom and come say, come step inside. This has a little bit more space because on the other side of the boat, we've got that shower room and that sort of encroaches into the bedroom space. So there's a bit more space in here, a bit more uh, dressing table space. In here you've got clothes storage and then down here you've got more clothes storage. This was what used to have a sink here as well on the other side and so we took that out and here we haven't built a set of drawers. All we've done is just put a new plywood base in and got some more dressing space. This is our bed and it's comfy. It's we actually pretty big as well. Slide in here 
you stick your legs in and yeah we set up the ipad here so it's great it's actually revolutionary because it means we can just lie in bed and we can just watch netflix without having to awkwardly like crook your neck so yeah loads of space it's a little bit awkward because especially flick Flick sort of stuck in the uh, what is called the coffin, the coffin, where she's got less head hut, head room. But yeah, it works great. It's really comfy. We've got a mattress topper on here, like a memory foam mattress topper, and yeah, delicious. <laughs> delicious. <laughs> uh, under under our bed is just some storage, and we've got and a little bit of the space is taken up by the diesel tank too. The diesel tank sort of bridges the two rooms. So in this door here is our engine room. So open that up and hopefully you'll recognize it from one of the other videos. In here we've got our seawater strainer, primary fuel filter, the prop shaft that we have now recovered and put back in place. This is our Perkins Prima M50. This is a 50 horsepower old style diesel. It's, there's no real electrical input apart from fully start a motor. It's just a cool old engine. Basically, once it starts, it just, as long as you give it clean fuel and clean oil, nothing will stop that thing. This, this engine in general has amazing access to do anything that we need. So that's the raw water impeller, extremely easy to change, loads of space at the back there. That is the heat exchanger. So very easy to take this rubber end cap off and you can take the whole heat exchanger tubing out and then over on the other side of the engine, in this sort of space down here, you, we'll show you later, but there's an oil filter. So it's very, very easy to do maintenance on this engine. On the other side, you've got another door, and that is to be accessed from the other bedroom. So under here is the other quarter of the engine. So you can pull out these stairs very easily, they slide out. And then we have access to the front of the engine. So you've got your alternator belt there, which um, drives the coolant pump and obviously the, the alternator. We've got oil filter. Bilge this, pump. This is the other end of the heat exchanger. This is your fuel pump. We've got little hooks on the side here. So the, the stairs stay in place while we're underway. And a good thing about these stairs is that they're not very steep. So they're actually great for us when it's big seas, but it's also great for Walter because he can get up and down the stairs very easily. <laughs> he doesn't make it look like he can, but on, I promise he can. can. <laughs> Go on. Good boy. Yeah. Good boy. And that's his favorite place to stand. Yeah, his is his favorite place in the whole boat to stand because- Just look at his bird's eye view. Yeah, he can, he can watch he can everything, everything that's going on and he can see every morsel and every crumb of food. <laughs> yeah. Is that good? And then- And then he comes down. Yeah, good boy. <laughs> so that concludes the boat tour of Walter. Of Walter. <laughs> That concludes the boat tour of Nondes. Uh, if there's anything else you guys want to find out about or you want us to tell you more about or you think we've missed, then uh, let us know. But hopefully you enjoyed seeing our little home. Oh, I love it.